let's start with what is the first thing you want to know? Okay. My first question is, can breaking out of your like very specific niche be a path to growth? So usually in the newsletter, I write to a very specific audience and it's the people who are eventually hopefully going to buy the course and join the community. And that product is for someone who is very specific. It's a person who's building a community business. And one of the, I have other ideas about things to write though. I thought about writing things that are applicable to people who are, that are broader than just the people who would buy the expensive thing we sell. And I wonder what you think about that as a strategy for growth. Like hopefully that post would go a little further and then bring new people into the newsletter. Sure. So let's, I've checked out your site, but I'm curious to hear from you and also other people who may not be familiar and know what you're doing. Tell me a little bit about what your main product is, who your main, who you, your target audience is for that product, what the newsletter currently covers, and then what you're thinking of potentially the broader version being. So give me a a crash course and all that. Yeah. So we sell a course and a community experience that is a year long and it's just under $2,000. And it's for people who are building what I call community businesses. Their community is like the core of the product that they're building. So memberships, cohort-based courses, evergreen courses where community is a big part of what they're doing, sometimes group coaching programs. So any of those where they want to make community like the center of their offer and what they sell. And it's a year long program. And usually the people who are joining are either at the beginning of their journey, they've tried some stuff and now they're like looking to growing or they're starting from scratch and they just, we go through the community experience piece, the finding a business model and then growing that. Uh, And the newsletter speaks to that pretty specifically and speaks to when you say it speaks to that meaning it speaks to starting a paid community or kind of early stage of a paid community whether you're starting or you just started but that's what the newsletter is focused on correct yep okay and the product so it, you said it's a course and community how does that play out is the course the beginning part of it is the course? i imagine the course isn't running over 12 months I imagine, but you tell me, what is, how does the sort of course community play out over the course of the year? Yeah, it's just one thing. When we started, it was a cohort-based course that would Mm -hmm. like, you come in during a cohort, you take the cohort for four weeks, and then you have a year of community support total in the Uh community. And now a lot of the lessons are pre-recorded. That's part, that's what's going to allow us to grow more next year. Also, it's going to be more of an evergreen. So it's like an uh, on-demand. So it's almost like it's resources, right? So basically you buy into this community, you get access to this collection of resources and you're in this community to connect with other people. It's really, they're buying a community that also comes with resources versus they're buying a course that comes with community. Semantics, yeah. but important. Sometimes I, sometimes I lead with the course because if you lead with the course, I find that you can, the higher price, you can justify the higher price point a little bit gotcha. better than if you lead with the community and people are like, oh, communities are $10 a month. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And tell me about the concept of broadening out the content or what you cover in your newsletter to theoretically attract more people. What would be in your mind, like what is broadening? Like what, where would you go beyond where you're currently going in terms of content? Yeah. So there are people like you, for example, mm-hmm. you run a community, but community is not a, the core of your business. You run like a creator business and like community is a part of what you do. Mm-hmm. So part of it is like thinking of people like that, who community is like a part of what they do, but it's not like the core of everything you do. But mm-hmm. one way of thinking about it, there's also like more like thought leadership pieces that are mm-hmm. like, I just had a right on Twitter about what's happening on Twitter and how that relates to online community and thinking more broadly, uh, like things that are like not directly helpful, but maybe are like making commentary on something broader that way. Mm -hmm. And then a whole, another direction is exploring like connection and like making friends and almost like speaking to the members of the people that of the communities that are in the community and like almost building an audience of the 
almost like a B2C audience of the people who are in the community, the customers of the people who are in the community. Okay. So and those so, are like just some direction. Right. No, that makes sense. And so I always like to start with your end goal and work backward. So the yeah. idea I assume is you're looking for ways to increase revenue. Ideally, my guess, I could be wrong, but my assumption is you wouldn't even be thinking about broadening your audience if you felt like, oh, there's plenty of people that I can get into this $1,800 a year community that I already have. You're thinking of broadening because you're wondering in some level, are there enough people out there? Would it be easier to broaden and bring people in? That's the concern. Because if you felt like there's plenty of people, the target audience is big enough, then I don't know that you necessarily would be broadening unless you just want to broaden out and talk about more things. So part of it is the community can't grow that fast and get the results that people are looking mm -hmm. for. Some of it is can't grow that fast. It can grow, but not as fast as I think the rest of it can right. potentially grow. So that's part of it. And it's also, if I write about broader stuff, then more people will see it and hopefully those people will share it and then it'll mm. reach more of the audience with the core product. Do you, and there's no right or wrong answer to this and your answer will probably change and evolve over time. But right now, when you think about it, do you envision, right now you have sort of one main product for this audience. Do you envision having multiple products for slightly different audiences, more products for this audience? Do you envision yourself expanding horizontally or just vertically, or you're not sure? I'm not sure. My my gut is to keep it the one product. Like one of my other questions is, is about adding another product, but yeah. almost in service to the bigger yep. thing. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. So let me give you... Let me give you a few thoughts and let me preface this by saying like you can succeed broadening, you can succeed by not broadening. Like it's not like you need to find the right answer. Either one can work. So really what I'm going to talk about is some things for you to think about to hopefully help you think through and get some more clarity on kind of which path you want to go down. So one thing I would say is that if you go broader, a couple things, if you go broader, the bigger your community gets the paid community, forget content for a second, but the bigger the paid community gets and the broader topically the community gets with people coming in, it can dilute some of that experience because people are in there for different reasons. So that's just one thing. It's not a reason not to do it, but it's one thing to keep in the back of your head of like, I might need to be careful here. It can also dilute the clarity of your messaging overall. One of the things that you know I liked about your website is it's really pretty clear on who you're for and who you're not for. And I think that's a big strength. If you start to, in content and newsletters and everything, talk about a million different things, it becomes a little more muddied and people aren't as clear of what do they go for, go to you for, especially in terms of payment and whatever, right? You start to become a little more like a lot of other people that are serving creators and that kind of stuff. So that's, again, something to be careful of. As far as reaching this broader audience with the assumption that there's a percentage of them that are a great fit for you, right? You do an article about thought leadership and maybe 20% of those people you're relevant to, 80% you're not, like, okay, that's great. What I would start with, as opposed to you creating that kind of different content, I would look for ways to do cross promotions or paid promotions with people who have that audience. So I would go to the person who's the thought leadership expert, maybe they have a thought leadership course, whatever it is, and I would go to them and I would say, hey, I do this specialty over here, you're the thought leadership guru. Let's promote each other's stuff because you'll still get that 20% without having to dilute your own content messaging, without having to bring in and attract this thought leadership crowd. Just go where they are, right? And you can do that for free in some cases with cross promote, at least as a starting point to see what happens. And you might realize, wow, this thought leadership thing, like it's higher than 20% who are interested in my stuff. It's 70% and maybe I should go down that road. But I think that would be a good place to start to get basically the benefits without the downsides of you having to create all this content and you having to change your messaging and newsletter and whatever. And if you do that, you can pick almost infinite numbers of niches, 
right? For example, mm -hmm. you could, and I'm not selling ads, I am selling ads in my newsletter, but I'm not saying this to sell an ad in my <laughs> newsletter. There's lots of people in my audience who are going to listen to this and are going to be interested. And by the way, you can also go on podcasts and that kind of thing, right? There's lots of people in my audience who are going to be interested in what you do. It's a shortcut for you to get to my audience through appearing on my podcast, through buying an ad, through a cross promotion, through whatever. That's a shortcut for you as opposed to having to go talk about how to grow your newsletter, or any of the things that I talk about. So I think if I were you, that's where I would start if you're thinking about broadening, because ultimately it's about, like you're really broadening, not, yes, you may have some passion about, I want to talk about X, Y, and Z thing, but really the reason you're broadening is to get to those as a way to surface more, more good leads. So that's where I would start probably if I were you. The other thing I would say is this idea that you're looking for the potential, potential people who would buy your $1,800 product. I always think about it in terms of you're actually looking for people that want the transformation that your product helps them make. And your newsletter mm -hmm. should be about that transformation. It's much easier to understand who wants a transformation than it is to understand who's willing to pay for a product that helps get that transformation. Because the truth is, there's lots of people who they themselves don't think they'd ever buy your product. But after they read your newsletter about that transformation for a couple months, suddenly they're like, I got to buy this from. So I would be focused in terms of your own sort of target audience assessment of this is the transformation my product helps people make. All of my content, my newsletter is a free version of helping people make that transformation. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, one of the things that's interesting, and I'm going to jump into, I was looking at your sales page for your product, and then I was looking at your newsletter sign up. And alignment and messaging is really important. So for anyone that's listening, I'm going to build a community business.com, which is your product sales page. Mm -hmm. The headline says, nurture and scale the community business you were always meant to build. A year-long course plus ongoing community experience for thoughtful community leaders. Design an engaging community experience and grow profitable business that increases connection for your members and for you. And then it goes on with a million other details, but that's the headline. Then your newsletter sign up, which is on businessofcommunity.co. The headline is become a better community, community business leader. A weekly email about the hows and whys of building small businesses that are engines for real connection and belong. So those are somewhat aligned, but they're also not aligned, right? So one is nurture and scale the community business you are always meant to build. The other is become a better community business leader. If you cut to the chase, the transformation is, I'm going to help you make money by having a community that serves your audience. And point A to point B, which is what transformation is all about, is point A is either you don't have a community that is serving and making money, or you've just started one and it's not quite working. And point B is you have a community that's really helping your audience and really making you money. That messaging, I certainly don't think is in the newsletter sign up. And I'm not sure it's mm -hmm. as clear as it could be on the sales page. Nurture and scale the community business you were always meant to build is not the same as build a community that serves your audience and makes you money. It doesn't have to be that crass, but, that, but that's the point. And whatever you come up with for that, the, the newsletter should reinforce that. They should almost be the same language. It's just one's a free newsletter helping you get that transformation, and the other is this bigger product helping you get that transformation. Because when you do that, everyone that signs up for the newsletter is saying, I want this transformation. They're way more likely to buy. The other mm -hmm. thing on the newsletter side, the headline, become a better community business leader, suggests you're already a community business leader. But a lot when of your people- you were people, saying that, I was thinking that. <laughs> right. A lot of people are just starting, right? Yeah. So if I don't have a community and I see a headline, this is going to teach me how to be a better community business leader, I'm probably going, I don't have a community, I'm out, right? This isn't for me. So those little things, those little copy things, and especially that alignment between newsletter and ultimate product can help with everything, can help with your newsletter content, can help with the signups and the conversions and, and all of that stuff. To sum up, that's where I would start, right? I would make sure that 
can get really clear on the product pitch that the newsletter is literally almost promising the same thing, just delivered in a different way. You're looking for people that want this transformation, not trying to guess who can afford it or not. And then to find those people, you're at least initially looking for other people that have those sort of ancillary related audiences. Podcasters would be great. If I were you, I'd be going to find, again, whether it's paid advertising or reaching, going to somebody that has a newsletter that, you know, 5,000 podcasters read and give them messaging about you are missing opportunities to serve your audience and monetize your community. Mm. You're just tailoring the same transformation. I'd go to someone that, you know, has an audience of public speakers, you know, or authors, right? You have a book, you're missing an opportunity to better serve your community. That same phrase that you come up with can then be applied all these different niches and you can reach those people by going to the people that already have those audiences as opposed to going the sort of hard long route of like, all right, how am I going to attract podcasters? I better do a blog post about podcasters. You can do that, but I think there's a shorter, easier way to do it, at least to start. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm getting really excited about this. this is, <laughs> it's really helpful to hear it from a different angle. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Now I'm the same way. Like I do these podcasts and I'm always like, I wish I could give myself these advice because I, it's funny. I remember a while ago, I looked at my newsletter sign up page and realized literally like four years into writing it that I didn't even say on the page that it was a newsletter. And I was like, well, that's not great. I'm talking to everyone else about the clarity of their stuff. Meanwhile, I don't even tell people what they're signing up for. 